Hello everyone, for those of you who don't know Jeff Cavalier of Athlean X, he has a rather impressive fitness and sports related science background. He's a physical therapist and strength coach who works with professional athletes including the New York Mets, and his education includes a master's degree in physical therapy and a bachelor of science in physio neurobiology and pre-medicine from the University of Connecticut, and he is a certified strength and conditioning specialist with the National Strength and Conditioning Association. And today, I'm going to explain why he doesn't know how to do his job. And uh, before some of you say, well, hey, don't you think you're a little out of place criticizing such a knowledgeable expert? Well, keep in mind that the third leading cause of death in the United States is medical misdiagnosis. So even experts can be wrong sometimes, and sometimes they're so wrong that it actually kills people. Now, I don't think Athlean X's advice has been so bad that it's uh, caused anyone's death, but some of his advice might be holding back your gains, and what is life without gains? So I think uh, one of Jeff Cavalier's main problems is he tends to overanalyze and overcomplicate things, and he skips over just some basic fundamental training principles, and he misunderstands some of these training principles. So today uh, I'm going to critique two, uh, two videos he's made relatively recently. Uh, the one video is titled, Can't Get Bigger Wider Delts, Just Do This, and Workout Volume is Killing Your Gains. What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteX.com. So today I want to try to help you to grow bigger delts. Now, you're going to have to promise that you'll trust the advice that I'm giving you. Because if you do, I am guaranteeing you that you're going to see results from what I'm telling you. So I think a lot of people do just put a lot of blind faith into whatever Jeff Cavalier says, and I think that's in large part due to his educational background and his professional work history. Again, if you take a look at his website, he's worked with the New York Mets, he's worked with NFL football players, and that sounds very impressive but it looks like his primary role with these athletes was uh, to work as a physical therapist for injury prevention and recovery, and strength training was just a secondary thing. And also consider, these are professional athletes. These are the most hardworking, the most genetically gifted uh, athletes on the planet, and they're very likely taking steroids, so they have some chemical enhancement working for them. So even if Jeff Cavalier isn't that great of a strength coach, well, these professional athletes he was helping train, they're extraordinarily hardworking, they're genetically gifted, they're on steroids, so even with a bad coach, yeah, I'm sure likely they would see some uh, progress and improvement. Uh, now, Jeff does work with some regular Joes, some people who aren't amazing natural athletes, like his, uh, his partner, Jesse. And if you take a look at the progress Jesse has made over the years, it's really not that impressive. He went from skinny to looking like he does some push-ups and swims occasionally. And uh, over the last, like, year or two, it seems that Jesse's progress has stagnated quite a bit. So, um, no, I, I don't see why we should just put blind faith into everything you say, and I think there are some fundamental flaws with how you approach training. Okay, now, I'm a big advocate of heavy overhead pressing. We work overhead pressing into everything we do. There's a value when you're training athletes to be better and more explosive at training overhead with heavier weights. When you're trying to grow bigger delts, specifically hypertrophy your delts, your heavy weights are likely going to be the enemy. The enemy because what happens is it invites the opportunity to substitute. And substitution is one of the biggest problems when it comes to growing bigger delts because the delts in the shoulders in particular will ask for help from everywhere. They'll ask for help from the low back to cheat a weight up. They'll ask for help from the legs and from the hips. They'll ask for help from your torso and your trunk to lean a weight up as you're trying to lift it. We don't want that. We want to direct what we're trying to direct into the muscle we're trying to train. Okay, so it sounds like Jeff understands that heavy weight training is great for muscle growth, and if we're focusing on muscle growth specifically, so hypertrophy style training, then performing sets in the 6 to 12 rep range would be totally appropriate. So why is he claiming that intensity is the enemy of deltoid training when you need to perform some heavy sets to grow your muscles to the maximum the maximum extent. 
Uh, he is making the argument that, okay, with deltoid training in, spe uh, in particular, you do run into form breakdown issues when you use too heavy of a weight where people will start uh, swinging and doing cheat reps. Well, okay, there's ways to work around that. Uh, you can do some supported exercises, like instead of doing just standing shoulder presses, you can do seated shoulder presses, which are impossible to cheat on. Uh, you can also just tell your training client, like, hey, don't swing. If you can't handle that, that amount of weight, just drop the weight and do strict form. And if they're having still having trouble with form breakdown with the weight they're using, well then, again, you can just make them do supported exercises. They can do chest-supported lateral raises to work their delts. So, uh, weird how he'd say, yeah, heavy weight training, great for muscle growth, but you have to avoid heavy weights for training delts. Stupid. So what you need to do is you need to make the delts and force the delts to do the work they're supposed to do. So for me, I actually would probably train with a 10. And all I'm gonna do is again, I can either stick with that activation drill that I showed you, or I can just try to stay straight the whole time. So I get a little lean forward here, I get my uh, thumb higher than my pinky, and I'm just gonna try to extend my arm as straight as I can, slow, slow repetition, straight out to there. Once I think I'm up there, I hold, I go another inch or so up, and then down. Now, if I really wanna keep this work going, I don't bring it all the way down to here. I stop about here, keeping the tension on. I bring it right back up again, initiating every second from the delt. So there's a few things I agree with here, a few things I disagree with. So the things I do agree with is I do like how Jeff emphasized the importance of establishing a mind-muscle connection and showing some techniques on how to establish a mind-muscle connection. I think this is especially important for people who are new to the gym. I've had a lot of new clients before, back when I was doing personal training, where uh, they couldn't really, whenever they did deltoid training, they couldn't really feel it. So I think some of the techniques he showed in this video uh, for, you know, really trying to squeeze, focusing on the shoulder, I think that is good for a beginner lifter. Uh, secondly, I do think he brought up a good point that, yeah, a lot of people are, you know, lifting too much with their ego, they're uh, grabbing weights that are way too heavy, they're swinging the weight, and they're not actually focusing on the target muscle. Now, with that said, I think you can go way too far in this direction and, uh, you know, force such an insanely strict form that that is actually going to prevent you from building any muscle. So it's very difficult to perform lateral raises with a heavy weight and strict form just because you have such little leverage. If you're going to have an outstretched arm and lift it up to, uh, you know, at least parallel with the ground, um, it is very difficult to hold your arm up like this with a heavy weight. So if we're going to use Jeff Cavalier's technique here with really, really strict form where we slowly lift the weight up, really squeeze it at the top with an outstretched arm and then slowly bring it down, uh, in order to do that, you're going to have to use such a light weight that it's likely not going to be all that effective for stimulating hypertrophy. You need uh, a certain amount of weight to stimulate hypertrophy. Generally speaking, about 60% of your one rep max on a given lift is required to stimulate muscle growth. So if you're only using like little baby weights to do this like really strict form, that's not going to be enough to uh, stimulate muscle growth in your deltoid effectively. And you should also consider the leverages change throughout the movement. So the first half of the movement down here, you have a lot more leverage, but at the top of the movement, the last half, you have a lot less leverage. So that means this first half of the movement, you could use a lot more weight and if you're only sticking with these tiny little baby weights, well then you're missing out on potential muscle growth down here by just always sticking to these really light weights. So I think there's a benefit to maybe having a bit of form breakdown, maybe not using super strict form, but using some heavier weights to get the benefit of using a heavier weight that's a bit better for stimulating hypertrophy to maximize some of the muscle growth down here, but you can alter the intensity throughout the week. You can use some lighter weights maybe at the beginning or end of the week, and then you can kind of maximize muscle growth at the top here, use strict form, you know, work on mind-muscle connection, all that. Uh, but to say that you should always avoid using heavy weight for whatever, you know, shoulder movement you're using, it's ridiculous, it's going to hold back your gains, 
And look, look at Jeff Cavalier's shoulder. He said himself that he only recently started doing this, where he started using really strict form and technique. Well, look at the guy's shoulders. They're big. He has big muscular shoulders. How do you think he got those shoulders? By lifting heavy weight. He admitted it himself at the beginning of the video. These are very light weights, and the sooner I actually realized this, the more willing I was able to kind of compromise that, that belief system, the faster my delts were able to grow. And this is in recent years too. And Jeff has had big shoulders for a long time now, and if you go back and, and look at his older videos, he was doing heavy deltoid training. There was a video from about a year ago where he was talking about shoulder training, and he was doing lateral raises with really heavy weight and not strict form. You want, at this point, to make sure that you're including something that allows all these muscles, like I said, of the shoulder girdle to work together. And we could do that with a combo of a cheat lateral, going into a dumbbell push press. Like, this is how the guy built his shoulders. Not with this 10 pounds really, really squeezing. Do you really think you build big shoulders like Jeff Cavalier by only using 10 pounds? It's ridiculous. So I don't know what's going through Jeff's head right now, but guess what? The way he built his shoulders was with heavy weight, not using the strictest form. Uh, strict form might be appropriate sometimes, but guess what? There are times when you go into the gym, you just have to lift heavy weight. So, yeah, like, I, I don't know why Jeff tries to overcomplicate things. Uh, like, dude, just go into the gym and lift heavy weight. The problem is this, guys. Your delts aren't as strong as you think they are. All that overhead pressing is utilizing a lot of other areas, a lot of the kinetic chain to help you to do that. And that's a great thing. Again, athletically, that's a great thing. But when we're trying to get hypertrophy, inefficiency is where you want to go for. You want to make this movement as inefficient as possible. Make the delts do all the work, take away all their help, and they will respond. And they will respond with a lot lighter weight than you think. I guarantee it. So again, you already know why I disagree with Jeff here. He believes that heavy shoulder work is prone to form breakdown when that's not necessarily true. You can do supported exercises where it's virtually impossible to have any kind of form breakdown. Um, and on top of that, I think uh, to lift heavy weight, sometimes you need to have a form breakdown to build the most amount of muscle possible. You're just not going to build big shoulders by doing little tiny baby weights. Um, so Jeff not only uh, neglected the importance of heavy weights when you're training shoulders, but he also neglected volume. He didn't uh, address volume at all in this video, and that's arguably the most important aspect of muscle growth. Regardless of how good or bad your form is for, you know, whatever deltoid exercises you're doing, if you're not doing enough total work, enough uh, total working sets throughout the week to grow muscle, you're not going to grow. So um, if you're doing, you know, maybe 10 sets uh, directed at your shoulders each week uh, and you're not growing any muscle, well, then try adding in more sets. Try doing, you know, 12 sets, maybe 15 sets, maybe you need 20 sets. Uh, this is going to depend on your training experience, your genetics, uh, whether you're male or female, your height, uh, a number of factors. But uh, I don't think it's a great thing that Jeff uh, not only ignored the importance of weight, but he also just completely ignored the importance of volume and just only focused on technique. And Jeff has another video titled, Workout Volume is Killing Your Gains. And again, uh, in this video, Jeff sort of diminished the importance of training volume, and he doesn't seem to have a complete grasp on what training volume is and how to incorporate volume into your programming. Volume is not, in isolation, going to be that important because what you need to do at all times is consider it in context along with intensity. And we're gonna talk about this because there's a few scenarios here. What we do is people say, well, God, I hear that. It, it, it actually, if volume is the driver, we know these are linked, intensity could actually come down. So like before, there are some things that I agree with Jeff, there's some things that I disagree with him. Uh, now where I do agree is that yes, volume in isolation, it's not the end all be all to everything. You do need to work with a certain amount of intensity to stimulate muscle growth. And uh, generally speaking, you need to lift with at least 60% of your one rep max to cause muscle growth. Uh, but where I disagree is that uh, Jeff wasn't very clear in a few things. Uh, just because you increase volume, that doesn't mean you decrease intensity. Uh, so like I mentioned before with the shoulder training, 
a lot of people just aren't doing enough total working sets. So some people, and this is often the case, they don't realize how many total sets they can really do until they reach their maximum recoverable volume. So uh, if you're one of those people, you can increase your total volume without decreasing intensity. Intensity stays the same. Um, also, depending on uh, your training experience or what stage of your training you're in, you can't always increase intensity from week to week or even month to month. Uh, there's some times where you can only increase volume and the weight has to stay the same. So again, there's a case where intensity stays the same, but volume increases by either adding more sets or adding more repetitions per set. So I don't think Jeff is a great strength coach because he tends to undermine the importance of intensity and volume. He also doesn't seem to understand how to apply these principles in his programming. And instead, he just tends to focus on uh, these weird technique drills and injury prevention methods that just end up getting you nowhere, like his client Jesse. And I can understand why he's, his videos kind of go down this route. Um, it, it's just boring when the, the right answer is just the simplest, dumbest answer. Like, really? Imagine if Jeff just made video after video where, you know, people ask him, Hey, I, my biceps aren't growing. I can't get bigger delts. Like, what am I doing wrong? And he just said, well, are you doing enough volume? Are you doing enough weight? Try lifting heavier weights. Try just doing more sets. These are, like, very simple, dumb-sounding answers, but guess what? They tend to be the right answers, and I think it just, like, throws people off. It, it just fascinates, like, beginner lifters when there's this dude who comes out of nowhere who has this weird educational background where he's a physiotherapist, and he gives you all these weird technique drills and exercises, and it, it, it like, oh, yeah, I've never seen that before. That's interesting. But it gets you nowhere. So, um, yes, the simplest answer in training tends to be the correct answer. You might not be lifting enough weight, you might not be doing enough sets. Simple as that. So, rather than doing these weird technique drills where you, you squeeze really hard with light weight, try doing heavy weights, try doing more sets. Beef. What a relief! When will this poisonous product cease? This is another public service announcement. You can believe it or you can doubt it. Let us begin now with the cow. The way it gets to your plate and how.